instructions to both boxers. Very good referee, Roy Francis. Bit of pressure on Catley here. He wants to look a lot better than he did last time. And include the Vinnie Jones look-alike, <laughs> who's up against him here. Catley in the purple trunks, the red of the rangy Andy Flute, who's come through a nightmare period in his career where he lost seven in a row to win his last three this year, only in local fights in his native black country. Catley, of course, on home territory in Bristol. Catley, the former British middleweight champion who moved up at very late notice to super middleweight and nearly won a world title against Richie Woodall and already seems to have just moved Flute with a couple of those early punches, Glenn. I guess he's keeping himself very compact, getting the centre of the ring, pushing Flute backwards and looking to let solid punches go. Flute once challenged for the British title against Neville Brown. He was beaten on cuts in the seventh round. Apart from that, he hasn't been in the spotlight, he hasn't really been in the candlelight even. But it's a great opportunity for Andy Flute to really put his name up there and really change his career around. So he'll know the importance of trying to do that and what this fight could mean to him. Flute looking to make his natural advantages of height and reach pay by using the left jab as often as he can. Good right to the body from Catley, who's already looking a little more business-like than he did last time out against Andrus Galpi. That was the night when he said he felt terrible when he woke up in the morning and ill all day and should never have fought. Good left hook again from Catley, who started quite sharply here. Flute taking this fight at only five days' notice. He would have preferred longer, Glenn. Yes, he could have done, with, obviously, with a lot longer, but I think in, in one aspect, maybe the, the fact that he hasn't had a lot of time to think about it may just help him in the, the nerves department. He's really just got to get about his work as best he can. At this point, just struggling to find his jab, Flute. He's putting it out there, but the accuracy of the punch is not too good. Sharp work by Catley defensively. Little right hand, but then Flute caught him with one back too. Oh, oh, suit you, madam. This is boxing. Take to the ring for the bout of the century. Slug it out with Lewis and Holyfield for the heavyweight championship of the world. Trade body blows with legends like Leonard and Ali. This is Knockout Kings 99 from EA Sports. EA Sports it's in the game. Welcome back to the Whitchurch Leisure Centre, which is a bit more like Ice Station Zebra, I can tell you tonight. We are freezing in here. Yes, it's pretty cold, isn't it? Maybe just Corners, ten seconds. one or two places um, colder than this. Now we're usually ice rinks. I'll tell you what, there are warmer mountainsides in the Pennines tonight than this. Second round of this uh, intercontinental championship fight. Glenn Catley, very much the favourite from Bristol in the purple trunks here, and Andy Flute, who comes from Coesley near Dudley in the black country. Would be a massive, massive for Flute if he was to 
pull off a shock victory here. But Catley will know how he feels because Catley himself, of course, is used to coming in as a late substitute. He did it against Woodall and it nearly worked for him that night. Short little right hand from Andy Flute. Flute just needs to settle a little. He's throwing that jab and it's not really connecting. Just needs to try and maybe aim for the chest instead of the head. He moves his head quite well, Kathleen. It's often a, a difficult target to, to pick up cleanly. Usually before his fights, or recent ones anyway, Catley uses a hypnotherapist, but no sign of him tonight. I wonder if he felt that after the last fight, he almost put him asleep. <laughs> Maybe he feels he just needs to get on and get the job done. Nice little punch there from Cali. The uppercut and then a short, sharp right hand. success with the right hand one thing that flute has to watch is cuts it's happened to him a lot and I think one is developing just underneath his left I would try to get a closer look sometimes these things can be a trick of the light I think there is a bit of blood around oh sharp combination from well, that's twice he's used that combination. The left uppercut, the right hand, and both times it's worked very well. Catley's camp have spent a long time arguing his case with the World Boxing Council, saying he should get another world title shot. What he has to prove every time he gets in the ring now is that he's worth that kind of argument. Sharper work from Catley. Guy Movies exclusive, produced by and starring Cuba Gooding Jr. All five of the murders in your book really happened. A stolen story. I didn't write the book. A guilty lawyer. You killed those men. That's impossible. A truth stranger than fiction. It looks a sense of committing a perfect crime, but nobody knows about it. Tom Berenger and Cuba Gooding Jr. Not on anywhere else, not for anyone else. I want a little justice. A Murder of Crows, part of the Sky Movers exclusive preview, next Saturday at 10 on Sky Premier. Welcome back to Bristol. Glenn Catley here, who can't afford to lose if he wants another world title chance. Getting the better of the argument so far against Andy Flute, who's got a cut yet again in his career. Well, that is a problem for Flute. He really is tough enough to deal with that sort of thing. But there's some good work from Catley in that round, especially a nice little combination, the left uppercut, the overhand right. Third round. Glenn Catley in the purple trunks. Catley, it's been a big year for him. This time last year, he hadn't even fought for the British middleweight title. Lots happened to him in 1998, and he hopes that a lot more will happen for him in 1999. All this from a fighter whose mum once wrote to the trade paper complaining about his inactivity. Well, that's all turned around now. He gets fights at every opportunity. This is more successful for Flute at the start of this third round. Just having a little trouble with Catley's hand speed and speed generally. But Flute is more naturally the super middleweight of these two. Catley's only recently moved up from middleweight. In the past, Flute has weighed as heavy as 12 stone 5, and this is the 12 stone division. At this point, he's definitely the, the sharper of the two, Catley. 
Landing with more accurate punches. But not having it all his own way, is he? No, he's occasionally getting caught with, with something decent back from Plouffe, but not enough. He's just trying to counter now, just waiting to see what Catley's going to do and then look for a nice counter. None of those really landing that cleanly by the look of it. Flute has fought two world champions. He was stopped in seven rounds by Robin Reed, but went the distance with Sven Otka, who's recently become the IBF world champion at this weight. Good jabbing from Catley's, picking his punches quite well. This is warmed up quite well into this fight, just finding his rhythm. As you said, he has some good jabs, and he switches that jab into a long uppercut, and that works through the guard of Flute. That cut no worse for Andy Flute. a big puncher when he was a middleweight but may struggle to be that in this new division but uh, winning the fight so far now due to be topping the bill here tonight was Joe Calzaghi in a world title defense but he's got an injury at the moment he is at ringside though he's chatting now to Adam Smith well Joe Glenn said he needed to impress tonight is he impressing you not at the moment no he's not he's winning the fight but um you know, Andy only took the took the fight at five days notice, so you know he's he's doing pretty good. And I think in the last round you've seen a big improvement from uh, Andy Flute. I think um, Glenn definitely has to step up, you know, a bit of urgency because you know he's gonna he's got to, he's got to impress. You know, he's got to stop Andy Flute. How do you see of, it going? Well, I think Andy, you know, I think if he had more training, I think um, he'd have a good chance, Andy Flute. But I think being at five days notice, you know, I think after about half a dozen rounds he's going to tire, and I think then Glenn would, Glenn would take over and maybe um, stop him late on. Thanks a lot, Joe. It's OK, thanks. Word is Joe Kalsaki will be back in the ring in mid-February in a world title defence, which may be announced in the next few days, or may not be. We're not supposed to know these things, but we do. <laughs> Here's round four. Red trunks of Andy Flute looking to spring a surprise here. Glenn Catley in the purple and with the shaven skull. Good shot by Flute. That must have been Flute's best punch so far. And he needs to land punches like that. He's got to really let Catley know that he's in there. And he's in there to try and win this fight. just able to do enough really to win any of the rounds so far is occasionally work quite nicely behind his jab but he's going to have to find a little bit more isn't he yes he is I'm sure maybe in the back of his mind he's also wondering about stamina the distance of this fight it's been short notice for him so he probably just thinks you know I've got to take my time a little bit in this one right to the body there from Andy Flute. Flute working quite nicely, doubling up on the jabby, maybe just growing in confidence. If this is better, he's starting to stand his ground and just look to, to counter with solid punches. Catley finding it hard to work so consistently. It's a nice little right-hand counter from him. But just style-wise, it doesn't look the easiest of opportunities, this for Catley, does it, to impress? 
No, it doesn't. I think he's got to busy himself of often the criticism with Cantley. He sometimes just slips into one pace. He needs to really swarm all over Flute. This is a bit better from Cat's the end of the round. Professional boxers just know in their heads automatically at what point in the round they are at because everything they do is timed to the three minutes duration. Referee warning them to watch the use of the heads. Catley has been noted being quite free with his head before, notably on the night he won the British middleweight title against Neville Brown. These are better punches now from Catley. There's live rugby union for you on Tuesday afternoon from 1.30, Sky Sports 2. It's the varsity match, Oxford against Cambridge. And on Wednesday night, Sky Sports 1, live basketball, Greater London Leopards against the Newcastle Eagles. So lots of live action all through the week. Live here in Bristol now. Glenn Catley on top, but with work against this fellow flute. Thanks a lot, Paul. Catley in the purple trunks on the far side from the Bristol boys camp. Here in this city trying to bring some uh, boxing glory to Bristol. Situation, by the way, with the world title is that Richie Woodall's due to defend against Vincenzo Nardiello, the Italian, at the end of January. But then you'd think Catley would be next in line to get another crack at Richie Woodall. And in the flute corner, his father looked as if he was really trying to G him or maybe he feels his spirits are just starting to sink and I think he can't afford that. He's got to keep very, very motivated Andy Flute. Didn't really land with those, Catley inside of the glove. Flute, by the way, comes from a boxing family. His dad, Alan, was an amateur for many years. And his uncle, who's in the corner, his trainer, was a professional heavyweight from 1977 to 85. So it's definitely in the blood. And Flute was taken down to the gym when he wasn't much more than a toddler and has stuck around basically ever since. So this would be some night for the family if he was to upset... Glenn Catley here. Oh, bad cut now for Flute. Underneath the left eye, on the cheekbone, and it looks serious. Catley's seen that, and he's had so many problems all the way through his career, Andy Flute, with cuts. And here's another one. He looks a bit ugly. Yes, that's a, a bad one. It looks quite deep. Hoarsely for Flute, it's under the eye. So that means the blood will not run into the eye or obscure his vision. It's something they should be able to control. The left uppercut, we think, caused it. the problem with getting the cut in it, it doubts start then to come into your mind and that would be a problem for flute he's got to stay positive pretty useful left hook come up a cut again from Catley Catley him can be hit and wobbled remember Paul Wesley doing that and of course that shock defeat he had in the first fight with the Hungarian Galfi when he was 
stopped in the seventh round and all over the place. So there's that hope for Flute there. Ooh, that is nasty. That is a deep and horrible gash. Yes, that is a, a very bad cut. As we said, Ian, it's not going to hamper the vision, but it's a, it's a nasty piece of damage there. It is over. Roy Francis, the referee, waves the fight off. After five rounds, Glenn Catley has won, and it stopped on the cut. Flute was frustrated by a cut on his other big night when he fought for the British middleweight title against Neville Brown. It's happened to him again tonight. He was behind at the time, and Catley has an inside schedule victory which keeps him on track. It wasn't especially impressive or convincing by Catley, but he's got the job done. Yes, he's got the, the win. That's the most important thing. Side schedule. I think the referee was taking co into consideration also the fact that Catley was probably winning all of the rounds. And, uh, you know, with damage like that, you've got to take it into consideration because he's, he's only going to get a lot more. And there was certainly no protest from Flute's corner. That's where we think it might have happened. Yeah, look, he's emerged with that cut. Well, he obviously realised it was difficult and you know, he'd been cut because he didn't really the charge at Cali. That was obviously in frustration and anger, but it was that nice little left uppercut where the damage occurred. Just a short, swiping little shot inside, but enough to to give him that sort of damage. But here's a question, is Catley really a super middleweight or is he just a blown up middle? Well, I, I think he's a blown up middle. I think he's, he's obviously waiting for his chance against Richie Woodall again, which, you know, fair play to him. He did well the last time and he wants another opportunity. But if that fails, I think we'll then in the middleweight division because I think he can still make that quite comfortable. Ladies and gentlemen, at the start of round six, Andy Flute has retired with a damaged uh, left eye, leaving the winner an intercontinental super middleweight champion, Glenn Kelly. <laughs> An appreciation Sadly for, for Andy Flute. It looks like it will never happen, but it's all happening for Cadley again. Tim, rough, tough veteran Jimmy Vincent from Birmingham has joined it at the start.